Today, we're going to be talking about using reverb effect, whether it's on your amp or with a pedal, when playing acoustic guitar. We're going to go through a whole bunch of stuff. It's going to be fun, so stick around. Hey, you're watching Alamo Music TV. My name is Chris McKee with Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe, turn on notifications, and like our videos. If you'd like to support the channel, visit our spring store linked below for our custom designed t-shirts like the new one I'm wearing today. We're following up our previous very popular video on using delay with acoustic guitar. This week, we are focusing on using reverb with acoustic guitar. Now reverb is reverberation. It's basically the echo of the sound that we hear. The difference between delay and reverb is that delay really focuses on kind of the primary response of the note. Uh, and there can be delay echo, but reverb is more of like the natural echo we hear. And this will make sense if you look at a lot of the reverb pedals or effects that are out there. You have things like hall and room effects. And that basically is trying to mimic the sound of the reverberation of sound in a room. Have you ever gone and sang or played guitar or any other instrument in kind of a very loud, very live room where there's a lot of echo? Think of like cathedrals or just big open spaces with a lot of hard surfaces, and you can hear that sound echoing and reverberating back to you, and it's very pleasing, particularly with guitar. When you're playing and a lot of the notes tend to kind of blend together and complement one another, it's a really nice sound that we love. Now we tend to use different types of reverbs for different reasons, but I find that most often it's electric guitar players that are using reverb. And it's usually like spring reverb on an amplifier. Now we say it's spring reverb because effectively on old tube amplifiers inside was a spring tank. And what that was is kind of what it sounds like. It was a box with springs stretched in it, and as the sound hit it, those springs would vibrate, and it would create its own reverberations and like artifacts that came off of the frequencies of the sounds. That's what a spring reverb is. Have you ever looked at a reverb pedal and it had plate reverb? Well, that is actually kind of what it sounds like too, but it's not your dinner plate. <laughs> it's actually a big metal plate that had a transducer connected to it in recording studios. And if you go on YouTube and do a search, you'll see old recording studios with these giant plate reverbs. This transducer would hit that plate and it would vibrate and create this reverberation echo that was really nice and pleasing. What we're able to do with a lot of modern effects is recreate some of the natural reverbs that we hear. You might look at effects pedals and it has a, an, a reverb effect called hall. And that is like a music hall. If you're ever in a large venue and you play, and it's kind of an empty venue or it's large with a bunch of hard surfaces, you'll hear that reverberating back. If you go into like a cathedral, it's got its own natural reverb that was util utilized centuries ago for that reverberation and echo of the voice when choirs were singing or people were speaking. And so that's what reverb in a nutshell is. What we can do with reverb on our guitars is essentially, in my opinion, magical. Because we can take our instrument and utilizing reverb either on an amp, and there's lots of acoustic amps that we've talked about recently on this channel that have reverb, or you can use effects pedals. And that's what I'm going to be doing today. So to give you an idea of what we're running through to demonstrate the awesome power of this effect, I'm using a Taylor 914 CE limited edition Chris McKee signature model that we have exclusive at Alamo Music. We're running this through the Fender Acoustic Go amp that we've been using recently to demo some of these things. This is new to the acoustic line and is a portable version of the uh, Acoustic Go or the Acoustic Amp. And then I'm running this through a Strymon Blue Sky Reverberator. Now I've said on my pedal board, I have the Big Sky, which is a ton of different reverbs. But this is a smaller, more affordable option from Strymon that I really like because particularly for acoustic guitar, it hits certain reverbs that you'll probably want to utilize along with variations of those reverbs that sound pretty phenomenal. You can utilize any type of pedal and I'm going to be trying to focus on some generalities here rather than what this pedal specifically can do, but not every single reverb pedal on the market today has all of these options. And so when you're, if you like part of what I'm doing and you say, I want that in my mix, then you, know, you wanna focus on pedals like this one, like either this one or ones that have what this has. Make sense? 
Great. Let's get started. So first of all, I'm going to play for you, and I'm just going to play a very simple finger style piece, and this is going to be what we call dry. And we say dry because that means it has no effects at all going through this. We've turned off all of the effects on the amplifier. You're just hearing the acoustic guitar and the general reverberation that'll happen from the continual vibration of the strings and the amp to the microphone, but that's it. So let's listen to what the dry signal sounds like first. It's nice, it's a nice little progression, it sounds great. But for effect, I'm going to turn on this reverb and I'm going to dial in a rather large reverb initially just to kind of indicate what we're doing here and make a very distinct difference between the dry and the wet signal. So let's start again with the dry. Personally, I think that sounds awesome. So let's talk about what this really big reverb is that I'm using on this pedal. So first of all, this pedal gives us three types of reverb. In this particular case, it's on the plate reverb. Now, I'm using a mode of shimmer. Now, what's shimmer? We actually talked about this on our last video when we are dealing with delay. And if you haven't seen that video, follow the link right above and it'll open a new window. You can watch that video and then come back to this one. But shimmer is basically where you're adding a note. Typically it's a fifth or an octave from the primary note that you're playing and it's kind of done in the background. It's, it's what we'd call duct under your primary you know, sound and it's just there to act kind of like the sound of a pad or a keyboard in the background. And if you're playing just acoustic by yourself or even if you're playing in a band mix, it can be a really powerful and unique and beautiful effect. With something like I'm playing now, it gives that sound a very ethereal effect. So let's listen to that again, and I'm just going to play and cut it off so you can hear that shimmer. Now I have a really long decay time currently on this reverb. And I've got the mix just past 12 o'clock. Now what those mean is the decay is how long it lasts. So if I want this effect, but I don't want it to be quite that long of a decay, I could turn it down. It was at about the five o'clock position. Now it's at the 12 o'clock position and it sounds like this. And it just kind of gets out of the way. So you can have some of that there, but if you're playing maybe something that's a little bit faster rhythmically, or you just want to make sure that it's not kind of getting too muddy depending upon what you're playing, you can sure, sure, uh, you can cut that off. Um, but if we bring that up, another way you can do that, long decay, and we can bring it down in the mix. So right now it's kind of between noon and one o'clock position. I'm gonna bring it down to nine o'clock. Think of the mix as basically bringing down the volume. And what it's doing is it's taking that reverb effect and cutting it down behind you. This is a really effective tool on a reverb pedal because if you're not running kind of a wet dry mix, which we'll do a video on at some point, it's just you, your guitar, and an amp with, the, with your effect, and you don't want the effect to overwhelm you and what you're playing, then you can use that mix to make sure that it's, it's present where you want it to be in the mix. So I tend to like, depending upon what I'm playing, if I'm by myself, I kind of like it in the mix so that it can be there complimenting me. But if you turn it up too much, 
It'll actually cover your playing. And that could be very cool too. Say you're not playing by yourself and you're actually backing somebody up. And this actually happens to me quite a bit. I might be in a setting where we need kind of a keyboard player and we don't have a keyboard player, so what do you do? Well, you can dial up your mix and what it's going to do is it's going to bring the effect over the sound of the instrument that you're playing so that you can play something like I just was and you have this kind of, this, this, my speaking's picking up, you kind of have this uh, keyboard sound going on, this pad sound that will complement it. So you have. Now in a situation like that, you might not even want to do picking. You might just want to do a chord. Pretty cool stuff. Now let's talk about some more run-of-the-mill things. So this was on Shimmer, that's the particular mode, but let's use Play in normal mode. And Play can be, again, very powerful, very beautiful reverb. So I'm gonna bring the decay and the mix basically at the 12 o'clock position, and this is what it sounds like dry. With the effect. So in this setup, it's complementing your sound. It's basically adding additional texture. There's going to be the perception of longer sustain. So I say perception because the note itself on the guitar isn't actually sustaining longer, but the note that's being perceived or heard by your audience is kind of hanging out for a longer period of time. Now another great one on here is room. And room is what it sounds like. It's, it's designed to sound like a nice big room. And using the normal setting, this is what it sounds like. So you can see here I have a short decay. So another setting on this pedal that we can utilize with any of them, but I'm going to utilize with Room, is the mod or modulation feature. And this basically introduces modulation to the reverb effect. It's not dissimilar from kind of tape crinkle that we were looking at on the uh, delay pedal the last time we did a uh, video like this, but it's kind of introducing like chorus effect and just these artifacts of modulation along with reverb that can make it sound pretty cool. So if we dial that in on here on the with room on the mode type, it'll sound like this. This is the clean, and then this is bypass, or this is going through the pedal rather. Here's some of that, there's kind of this, these variations. I'm gonna turn up the mix, maybe you can hear it even better. I typically wouldn't have the mix that high when I'm playing it, but that'll give you an idea. And we can utilize that with any of these. Now if we go to a spring reverb, this is the classic reverb that you typically hear on an electric guitar amp. It's the artifacts of those springs. Now, a lot of times you might have it dialed in as a very short decay, but we can turn that up again, and you get this weird kind of plucky response from it. So if we do the same thing with there, I'm going to go through each one of these modes with the, with the type so you can get an idea. So this will be spring, normal, I'll go through mod, shimmer, I'll do the same with the other three.
Fun stuff. So hopefully that's very helpful as an introduction to using reverb with an acoustic guitar. Now, like I said last time, here are the rules. There are no rules, but I can give you some tips. For one, if you're playing something that is very rhythmic, playing something at a faster pace, playing something where you kind of need some space, make sure that you don't have too big of a reverb dialed in. If your reverb is too big or it's too heavy in the mix, it's very easy to make things muddy. Now that is actually kind of a complicated thing that deals with EQ, if you have delay going at the same time, kind of balancing all of this out. But what you want to make sure is that if it is your desire for the primary part to be heard, that you're not covering it with effects. Now, if the idea is to cover it with effects, like I showed you with the mix all the way up, then that's what you do. So that is a tip. If you're playing something rhythmic or fast, maybe look at something with a shorter decay. Outside of that, Experiment, play all sorts of stuff, try different styles, experiment with different reverb pedals, um, even reverb on your amp. If you already have it, that's a great way to start. Um, but it's a lot of fun. Reverb and delay tend to be my favorite effects for use with acoustic or electric guitar. It adds so much to the mix. Um, I'll be honest, it can cover up your mistakes, but the best part is that the texture that it brings to the table is something that you generally can't do otherwise with your fingers no matter how good you are. And so it's a lot of fun. I'm a big proponent. If you're playing acoustic guitar and that's really all you're playing, you don't have electric guitar, still go out, buy yourself a reverb and a delay pedal and have a lot of fun. Hopefully you like these videos and you're getting something out of them. If you are, let us know in the comments what other effects you would like to see us uh, utilize with an acoustic guitar um, and kind of experiment and discover things along the way. Now, if you're new to the channel, Please make sure you subscribe, turn on notifications, like our videos, and if you'd like to see some cool stuff that we're not putting on YouTube, head over to the Patreon page. There's a link in our description. We're doing a lot of fun stuff that's over there first or sometimes only, and you can take a look there. We're having a lot of fun with our patrons there, so become an Alamo Music Insider and get to experiment with all of that fun stuff, um, and just keep coming back for more. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time. <laughs>